I study planetary science, and my research focuses on ice on Mercury. Ice on the innermost planet in the solar system, where daytime temperatures reach over 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Ice so close to the sun, yet composed of nearly 95% pure water and piled several meters high. So, how is this possible? Unlike Earth, which is tilted 23.5 degrees relative to our orbital plane, Mercury's axial tilt is almost nothing. And so at the regions closest to the poles, there are areas that receive no direct sunlight. Without an atmosphere present to trap heat, these permanently shadowed regions have temperatures that are below freezing, that are stable thermal environments for water ice on billion-year timescales, essentially since the formation of the planet. Mercury has been pummeled by objects at over 100,000 miles an hour for billions of years, producing a highly cratered surface. And as you can see, this has led to very rough topography, full of permanent shadows, which is actually a very inviting environment for water ice. In my research, we're interested in where the water ice is, how much there is, and how it got there. Once we start to answer these questions, we can assess how astronauts can access and utilize this ice in upcoming space missions. To answer these questions, I use high-resolution data acquired by NASA's MESSENGER spacecraft, which orbited the planet Mercury for just over four years. In my current project, I identify new evidence for surface ice on Mercury in three large craters, which are circled here in red. The contribution of ice in these craters is significant. The surface area of these ice sheets is just greater than the surface area of the state of Rhode Island. I also identify new evidence for small-scale ice deposits that are so small I couldn't even mark them here on this map. These imply that there are many additional micro-cold traps on Mercury, suggesting that the planet is a lot icier than we thought. We show that these micro-cold traps contribute significantly to the amount of ice on Mercury, suggesting that the innermost planet has a lot of ice that was previously unaccounted for. In fact, if we add up all of these tiny micro-cold traps of ice, the ice inventory on the planet can more than double. Interestingly, Earth's moon shows similar evidence for water ice, but to smaller extents. We seek to resolve the fundamental differences between ice on Mercury and the moon, which has implications for the source and the evolution of water throughout the solar system. Because the amount of water that we see on these bodies is similar to what can be retained through collisions with comets and asteroids, we think that the water sources from giant impacts onto these bodies, just as how scientists propose much of our own water came to planet Earth. After we determine where the water is and how much there is, we can start to assess how these ices can be useful to NASA and other space agencies. The existence of ices on other planetary bodies offers a powerful opportunity to utilize resources on site, given that ices are valuable sources of water, oxygen, fuel, and other consumables. The implementation of a resource extraction base will revolutionize space exploration by substantially reducing the amount of resources we have to pack on our journey before liftoff, furthering the autonomy of human exploration. Therefore, characterizing these ices is essential to mission planning and operational design and has a substantial influence on the landing site selection of upcoming missions. My research answers questions about these ice deposits on Mercury and the Moon, therefore having a significant impact on the eventual colonization on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Thank you.